This one's caught my eye for a multiple years. I love the white XPS 13, but sadly that wasn't available. So I got this instead. This is the 9310 XPS 13, the newest Dell Ultrabook uh, with the latest 11th gen Intel Core i7 processor. Now I haven't reviewed a lot of laptops, but hey, I'm gonna try. Asher from C4E Tech and let's get started. Now what really impressed me with the XPS 13, it's gotta be uh, this form factor. Now at 1.2 kgs, this is one of the lightest Ultrabooks around. The bezels are slim AF, just look at this side by side with the Apple MacBook Air M1. Similar size displays, but the XPS 13 has a much smaller footprint. So why did I end up buying this? Now, to be honest, I wanted a light laptop that I can take out with me to script on the go, or even just sitting on the couch. My PC is set up with WhatsApp web, two countries worth now, Slack, so distractions are plenty. So I wanted a laptop where I can script, uh, not be signed into my socials, no distractions, and if needed, be able to take it out. And this seemed to just fit the bill. Now, I am very, very finicky about the keyboards I use. I have a Corsair K95, both in UAE and India. At home, I use a Logitech G613. So Mac keyboards galore. I have always hated typing on smaller keyboards. I rarely use my MSI GS65 Stealth uh, keyboard unless I was traveling and was forced to use it. I hate typing more than a few sentences using the Apple keyboard for my iPad, regardless of how nice it actually is. So I was so damn surprised at how easy it was for me to get used to the XPS 13's keyboard. I love the travel, I love how well spaced out the keys are, how big they are. Uh, I usually type at around the 60 words per minute mark, and with the XPS, I was able to maintain that. Almost similar numbers as you guys can see, and that's probably my favorite thing about this Ultrabook, the keyboard. Favorite feature number two, it's gotta be Windows Hello support. Of course, uh, you'd have seen this with many a review, one finger open test, it passes it, once you open it, poof, face deduction, the IR camera, Windows Hello, and you're in. Now, if you're wearing a mask, there is a fingerprint scanner built into this power key, which happens to come, uh, come in handy these days. And it also happens to be extremely responsive. Okay, so you've unlocked it quickly. You can type on it, great. That doesn't really amount to anything if the display or performance don't measure up. And they do. The display is sweet to look at. It's Full HD Plus 16 by 10 from a quality perspective. This one covers 90% of the DCI-P3 color gamut, 100% of the sRGB color gamut. It's an IPS panel that can go all the way up to 500 nits. So it's plenty bright even for outdoor usage. And it is covered by Corning's Gorilla Glass 6. Now Dell does provide options here. Uh, what you are seeing in this video is the Full HD Plus non-touch variant. There's also a touch and uh, even a 4K alternative uh, that Dell does offer. Personally, I think 4K is overkill on this form factor, but hey, we've seen so-called pro displays, 4K displays on phones. So if somebody wants the sharpness, can't really complain. With complete whites, I did notice some kind of discoloration when not looking at the panel head on. Uh, I'm not sure if this is regulation or it's just my unit that has the issue. It is minor though, uh, and I still did not have any issues spending a lot of time with this laptop on Marvel Unlimited. With videos, the 16 by 10 aspect ratio means there's a little bit of extra bars to the top and bottom. Uh, but hey, the colors are rich, the videos are crisp, and the speakers, they sound surprisingly loud, especially given they are not facing upwards. So I did have an excellent time with media consumption. Now a small point to note, Dell seems to have done the best they can with the speakers. As you can see, the back here, it kind of curves. So when you put this on a surface, the speaker is still not directly getting muffled. Uh, so it, the trade-off to this, if they wanted the speakers upwards, you know, firing, uh, firing towards you, they have had to gone for a bigger chassis or made the keyboard smaller. And hell, I don't want the keyboard smaller. Personally, I like this trade-off. Uh, of course, something like the MacBook Air M1, the other Ultrabook that I have, which is why I keep going back to it, it sounds much better, but it also has a larger form factor, which has uh, which has allowed Apple to include those upwards firing speakers. Okay, uh, now watch video script, read comics. You don't need a Windows Ultrabook for that, do you? A Chromebook would just, just do well enough. So what else can this do? 
At the heart of it all, we have the Intel i7 11G67 chip. Intel's newest Tiger Lake U generation chip with four Vilokov core processors. It's supposed to bring with it decent performance improvements over last gen, but the biggest improvement, the main selling point here, is the GPU gain. The Intel Iris Xe graphics is supposed to be twice as fast as last gen. So to give you some rough perspective, it's expected to dedicate, I mean, rival dedicated MX250s and in some cases even the MX350 with graphic performance, or at least so Intel claims. Now, uh, in my time, I was able to play most light games, Red Alert Remastered from last year ran perfectly at a solid 60 FPS. So you shouldn't have any issues with something like say CSGO. Hell, uh, even recent titles like Control, they ran. And I use that term ran very loosely here. Now, control is pretty intense, but it still managed to run at high with ray tracing maxed out. Okay, that didn't happen. No, that's just pulling a leg. Jokes apart, control did run. I had to drop the resolution to sub HD levels, turn everything down to low, and you can't even think about ray tracing, right? Uh, but I, once I did that, it did run at a solid 30 FPS. Now for such a tiny little ultrabook with built-in Intel graphics, the fact that it can play AAA titles is actually something we wouldn't have expected even just a few years back. So from a GPU perspective, it's really good. And then there is enough horsepower for Premiere or Photoshop. So I did try those two and I didn't have any issues. Now, as you can see, even after 30 plus minutes of control here, the thermals, they remain excellent. I would not suggest you keeping it on your lap and editing or doing anything intense because of course it's gonna, you know, it does get warm. But overall, uh, with regards to the keyboard, at least I did not feel any heating. Uh, I could keep it in my, uh, keep it on my lap and type. I could script that way and even the back or the keyboard did not get hot. While, while playing games, the keyboard never got hot. So at no point did I feel I need to get a third, I mean, an external keyboard. Uh, I was perfectly fine using this. Now other specs, uh, they include eight or 16 gig, gigs of RAM, 256 or 512 gigs of M.2 storage. The storage, as you can see, is plenty fast. So no, no waiting for applications to launch. Uh, and what am I saying? This is a 1 TB storage variant. And why did I just say 256 or 512? I'm sorry, guys. Uh, 256, 512 or 1 TB of M.2 storage. I just, just actually thought about it. With battery life, the battery capacity is 49.9 watt hours. Uh, I could get eight-ish hours of uh, mixed usage, scripting with YouTube running in the background or YouTube with scripts in the background. Yeah, I do that a lot. Anyways, uh, a little bit of game testing uh, and, you know, where you're watching your regular social media stuff. With all that, uh, it had no qualms staying alive through the day. There's a 65 watt charger included too. And yes, laptop manufacturers, uh, it is so bad of them that they refuse to be eco-friendly. Uh, they still include chargers in the box. Hell, even Apple continues to do so. It's so irresponsible of them and I hope they remove it uh, from the... Who am I kidding? I'm happy that they do include chargers in the box. Uh, so what else? The webcam, it's regulation 720p, nothing special, except for the fact that they've managed to cram it in right here. It's not buried into a, a button. It's not uh, out of position. Now, now with all the Zoom calls and the Skyping that we're doing these days, the fact that the webcam is in the right position, I feel, despite things being this leak, uh, you got to give tell that. Props. This is the video camera recording and the audio you get out of this, not great, but hey, it flares, that's something. So let's come uh, come back full circle to the build. This metal build, it feels solid. There's no flexing or creaking with the display or the keyboard and the branding is kept minimal. You do get vents to the back and to the bottom. As for IO, we've got the headphone jack here to the right. Uh, there's a Thunderbolt 4 uh, Type-C port here and again here as well. And then there is a micro SD card slot. Uh, it is very convenient that you can charge this laptop via either type C port. So regardless of where you're sitting, where at which end of the table you are, you could still plug it in. That was very, very convenient for me. 
Uh, and for what it is worth, Dell does include a Type-C to Type-A converter in the box, but for the vast majority of us, that is not gonna be enough. We're gonna need something like, you know, this or this. Now this dongle and dock are from our sponsor for this video, uh, Hyper, and that is my segue into sponsorship. Hey. This is the Hyperdrive 6-in-1 USB-C hub. It plugs right to the side and allows for HDMI out, power delivery up to 60 watts, micro SD and SD card reading options, a headphone jack, and a USB Type-A port. If you want something a little more serious, then you could probably go for a dock like this one, the Hyperdrive Gen 2 18 port dock. It's massive, yes, but it's very well built and it comes with an extensive array of expansion options. I'll leave a link to Hyperdrive in the description below and C4E Tech viewers can use the discount code C4E Tech to get 10% off. Okay. Now let's return back to the Dell XPS 13. This laptop cost me 7,000 dirhams and in India, uh, it retails for a little more. Amazon right now only lists the i5 version for about 1.43 lakhs. For this price, the XPS 13 seems to be a great laptop, unless the MacBook Air M1 did not exist. Now, personally, I absolutely love how light this is. I love Windows Hello support and the keyboard, but when the MacBook, MacBook Air M1 is priced so competitively, and I did stutter because I had to say competitively and Apple in the same sentence, but it's true, it's damn true. It's priced just a hundred US dollars more than the XPS 13 9310. In India, the price difference between the top variants is about 50,000 rupees. Now, even if we assume that, you know, the on-site price is not exactly what the product is gonna sell for, the base variant is about 12,000 rupees cheaper compared to Dell's website pricing on Amazon itself. So yes, even if we consider that it's gonna be priced cheaper, it's still about 50,000 rupees. The US price difference of $100 that we can live with, but 50,000 freaking rupees, that seems to be a little too high. So that's my take on the 9310. Now you guys tell me, what do you think about it? Actually, you know what? Don't tell me what you think about it. I, I, I don't really care about that. What I do care about though, is what you think about this video, my laptop review. It's been a long, long time since I did one. So do you feel I actually did justice to this? Do you feel I should have talked about anything else? Do you feel there is something I kinda didn't focus enough on? Let me know in the comments below. And guys, think of my laptop reviews and PC coverage as an evolution. Think of it as, you know, it could go any way you want it to. So it is up to you to take it, to direct it, to give direction to it. But let's say you want to say, you know, there are some people who are going to say, hey, you suck. I'm going to watch Linus or Dave 2D instead. Sorry, I don't know how to help with that. Here are other things you can try. See, I don't know how to help with that. I can't really, I can't, I can't really do much about that. You know, go for it. I'm sorry I disappointed you, but there is not much else I can do. I can't really help with that. But if you feel there is something constructive for you to say, if you find some particular part of this video underwhelming, uh, I didn't show, I didn't focus something, I mean, enough on something or anything like that. Uh, you know, if you feel I wasn't, uh, in, I didn't go in depth enough, uh, please do leave a comment. Well, I can't promise every single thing you request uh, will be implemented right in the next video. What I can promise is that I will read each and every comment and try to implement as much as possible. So thanks in advance, C4E fam. Uh, now, that's pretty much it and it is time for me to bid you adieu. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on what you felt about the video, all that stuff. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day.